Philadelphia. That's where Dr. Mike Srigliano is joining us live this morning. Dr. Mike, good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, Pilar. So where are we at here with the coronavirus pandemic? What's the latest? Well, numbers are going down, but there's a great concern over these variants that are popping up all over the place. And to be honest with you, Pilar, we are in a race against the virus. And we heard Dr. Fauci say that April may be open season. Now, what do I think he meant by that? I think that there will be, at least in this country, a lot more access for the general public to get their vaccinations. Remember, it has really been a free-for-all up to now in terms of people getting access to vaccine. But the Biden administration has said they're going to purchase another 100 million doses of the Moderna virus vaccine. Uh, they're uh, going to uh, purchase another 100 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine. And Johnson & Johnson should be coming up soon for emergency use authorization. And that will uh, ultimately be a game changer in terms of access and amount of vaccine. Yeah, Dr. Mike, when we're saying the general public could start having access to it in April and we should be able to inoculate most Americans by the middle or end of summer, is that soon enough? We've been living this way for almost exactly a year now. Well, it, it's never soon enough. I'd like everyone to have been vaccinated before last March, but it, let, let's get kind of realistic here. This is an unprecedented thing. This was a pandemic that has not occurred. The world has not seen since 1918. And so what we now are charged with is inoculating the entire planet. So even though you may say, well, the end of this year, it's been a long time, it's going to be challenging, and I don't think with the way this virus is behaving that this is the end of COVID-19. I think that ultimately when people all get vaccinated, we will be in a position to have somewhat of a more normal life. But I think that this normal life may still involve masks and a different way of living. In addition, I think we're going to need booster shots to cover uh, ensuing variants that may come about down the road. Dr. Mike, is it true that uh, trial studies are being done with, with children? Well, there's no question that there are two groups of people that desperately need to be studied, pregnant women and children uh, and adolescents under the age of 16. Now, what several of the companies are doing is they're looking at groups of kids aged maybe 12 to 16, 12 to 18 first, and then looking at kids five and up. Uh, and, and this is very important data. We want to always go by the science. And I teach medical students here at the University of Pennsylvania all the time, in God we trust and everyone else, show me the data. And when it comes to pregnant women, that's a whole nother can of worms, Pilar. Uh, we, we want to protect our pregnant women uh, from the virus, but we also need some good data. So far, there does not appear to be any worrisome findings, but it must be studied more. So what do we think? Could life be a little more normal by the fall? Well, that's what I'm hoping for, Pilar. Uh, I, I uh, have gotten used to wearing masks. Uh, I think it improves my looks uh, because I get covered up fair amounts. But when it comes down to it, it would be nice to go to a restaurant and really have a nice time and not worry about aerosolized COVID-19 hanging around. And so, boy, wouldn't it be great if everyone got vaccinated? You may have heard uh, and reported on the fact that in fully vaccinated people, you don't even have to quarantine anymore uh, for at least uh, two weeks after your last vaccine, up to three months if you've been exposed and asymptomatic uh, with someone who did have the virus. So look at that. That could be a real game changer. Look at Valentine's Day. Now, I'm lucky, Pilar, one of you guys picked me. And next year, I hope to show the fact that I'm appreciative by taking my wife out to an actual restaurant and not cooking myself like I'm doing this year and exposing her to food poisoning uh, because I'm not a very good cook. So that's what I'm hoping for.
Oh, Dr. Mike. <laughs> um, good reminder, by the way, that Sunday's Valentine's Day. <laughs> but um, I wanted to ask you, I feel like one of the top headlines this week in terms of the coronavirus is double masking. Can it significantly improve protection according to new data from the CDC? No question about it, Pilar. This is a no-brainer, and it's something that we have control over. So let's look at what you do. You wear a surgical mask, and they're plentiful now. You can get them everywhere. And you put the surgical mask on, and what the Centers for Disease Control is recommending, you cover that up with a uh, double-layered cotton mask with a high thread count. That way you can wash it, reuse it. And basically what that does is that it makes it a tight fit. Because if you look at regular surgical masks, there's air pockets here. You can, you can get air in there and you don't want that. What you want to do is have it flat and pushed up against your face. And if you do that, you're going to reduce your risk by like 92% of spreading the virus and protecting yourself. So that is the way to go. All right, Dr. Mike, anything else you want to tell me this morning? Pilar, we need to stay positive. These are the tough times when you're in an endurance race. You want to quit. Your body is aching. You've been running and running and running, but you only have another quarter of the way to go. We can do it. We need to be smart. We need to wear masks, socially distance, stay the course. Vaccines are coming and we will get through this. And I think that tough times make people tougher and we will be a better planet once this is all done. All right, Dr. Mike Sirigliano's Coronavirus Updates live right here on News Now from Fox. Dr. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. Pilar, you stay safe and you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Same to you. We are taking another live look, everybody, at the two-alarm fire happening in Newark, New Jersey. More